Okay, so something like this. So speaker rated 80 watts registers 95 decibels four meters away. What would it register eight meters away? What if there was another speaker rated 100 watts? What would the decibel reading at the point given by the image below? given by the image below. Right. Okay. So in this example, um, are we going to assume that there's absorption in the air? No. Well, if, if we didn't know, we would think, okay, maybe there's no absorption. But from the example that we just did, uh, that give, gave us a hint, probably there is absorption. Because remember, uh, we did a 60 watt uh, speaker and five meters away would have given us 112 decibels if there was no absorption. So here, how could it 80 watts, four meters away, give you only 95, right? So it has to be some absorption. So from the information given, we could, we're we gonna work backwards. So this is similar to the experiment that I said you could do, right? We're gonna work backwards. So if this is 95 decibels, So work backwards to figure out what the intensity of that sound wave is, right? Uh, then from there figure out what the alpha is, right? Because we don't know the alpha. So then divide this by this, so you get 9.5 is equal to 10 log of i over i zero. I'm oh, sorry, not 10, sorry. Uh, log of i over i zero, then raise both sides to the power 10. So you got here 10 to the power 9.5 is equal to i over i zero. Then i zero is equal to 10 to the minus 12. So then we can calculate that. And to the power, right? 9.5 and the minus 12 is going to be negative uh, two and a half. Is that right? Negative two and a half. Point to the power, negative. So uh, negative 2.5. I think that calculator point zero zero three one six. work backwards to figure out what the alpha is. So then we can say i is equal to uh, p e to the minus alpha r over 4 pi r squared. So if this is 0 0.00316227, the power of the speaker is 80, and then e to the minus alpha, and then r is 4 meters over 4 pi 4 squared. Right? So then cross multiply, divide by 80, take the ln of that, right? So this times four pi times pi times 16, right? Divide by 80, right? So now I have 0 0.00794767 e to the minus four alpha. I'll take the ln of that and then divide by negative four. Ln divided by one point two zero eight seven. Right? So now that we know that, we can answer well how how what would it register eight meters away? 
All right? So let's bring it over here. So now the intensity eight meters away would be what? This one is kind of hard. You can't just say, oh, okay, I've doubled the distance. What's gonna happen? You, there's no quick way to do it. You just have to go back and reapply the formula. Uh, 80 times e to the minus uh, 1.2087 times 8 over 4 pi 8 squared. All right? Then recalculate the intensity, then change it back to log, uh, log system. Calculate the decimals. So, uh, Intensity comes out 6.284145 times 10 to the minus 6. Right? To change it back to a log, what do you do? You multiply it by 10 to the 12th, take the log of it, then multiply it by 10. Right? So decibels 10 log of. Seven point nine eight decibels. The other one was ninety five decibels. So it went down about thirty decibels because of absorption. Now, if it what if there was no absorption in the air, right? What would it have gone down? How far? In other words, there was. Let's say this was without. There was no absorption in the air. If you double the distance, if you double the distance, what would happen to the intensity? It would be one fourth. Right? Uh, the intensity would go down by one fourth. Then what would happen to the log of that? In other words, can we predict, if I say the decibels is a, at a certain distance, the decibel is this, there's no absorption. If you double the distance, what happens to the decibels? Right? So the, what would be the, what would happen? If you double distance, what happens to decibels? If no absorption. Well then we can say decibels is 10 log of if you double the distance, what happens to the intensity? Uh, one fourth of the initial intensity, right? So it's literally just one fourth. So then it goes, um, and then this is the regular intensity, right? So I'm just saying I over this. So 10 log of I minus 10 log of four, right? So what's 10 log of four? This comes out to be six decibels, right? So every time you double the distance, if there's no absorption, it goes down by six decibels, right? But of course, 95 decibels requires there to be absorption because for 80 watts, it would have been more like 100 something decibels. Then if I had doubled the distance, it would be six less than that. Another double, six less than that. Another double, six less than that. But because there is absorption, we went from 4 to 8, and it went from 95 to 67. 
quite a lot more of this, right? Because of the exponential factor, right? So it exponentially decreased, so it went down by almost 30 decibels, see? Okay, how about something like this? How do intensities of two speakers add up? Is intensity a scalar or a vector? Vector. Huh? Intensity. Yeah, so if I want to do the intensity of this over here plus the intensity of this over here, do I have to do, oh, the intensity of the 80 watt is this way, the intensity of the 100 watt this way, and we have to break it up into components. Do I have to do that, or is it a scalar? It's a scalar. Yeah, it's a measure of the watts, the power of the thing, so it's a scalar. So it's more like adding voltages, right? Imagine having two charges, you know, Q, 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 and it's like the question in physics three. What's the total voltage here, right? So then voltage is easier, because then you would say, K, Q over R, right? So then you will add the voltage of this plus the voltage of that. Plus K, Q, 2 over R, 2. <coughs> right? And that's it. So the intensity is going to be P1 over 4 pi R1 squared plus P2 over 4 pi R2 squared. So in the sense that it's a scalar and in the sense that how it adds up, it adds up like a voltage. The only difference is voltage is R, linear uh, power of R, whereas intensity is R squared, right? But it adds up similar to a voltage. So that's good. It makes our life a little bit easier. So then what would I do here? So then I would add up the intensity of each each speaker, right? So since there is absorption in the sound, in the air, right? We would do the I total is going to be what? 80 e to the minus 1 point, what was the alpha? 2087. What would be the distance here? Square root of? 100 plus 16, right? That would be the distance R, right? We call that R1 if we want, right? Divided by what? 4 pi uh, the R squared, right? So that would be uh, 10 squared plus 4 squared. So this is R squared. Plus I would add the intensity of this guy. Scalar, no need to worry about direction. So then I would do 100 e to the minus alpha times that distance, which is 4, over 4 pi times 4 squared. Add those two intensities, and then change that to a log scale. Okay? Now, of course, I, I am assuming that these two speakers are not driven by the same oscillator, and they're not at the same frequency. Because if they were same frequency, and they're originally out of phase, then there might be interference, and they might destructively interfere, like, right? That? Yeah, that's chapter 18 topic, not chapter 17. Chapter 17, we're assuming you have two random sound sources with different frequencies and amplitudes, and they're out of phase completely, right? Then their amplitudes add up as a scalar. But if they're in phase, then you might have destructive constructive interference, right? So that's another topic, which we'll do Monday, <laughs> right? Uh, so add those two, tell me what you get, because right now I'm feeling lazy. 87.3792. 80, uh, oh, you already converted it to decibels? Yeah. Okay, so 87.3792. 2 decibels. Right, so then you get that number. Uh, you, I guess you could, uh, no, no, you can't factor out anything. You can only factor out 4 pi pretty much. Add that, you might multiply it by 10 to the 12, and then change it to a log scale, right? Cool. Okay, now let's do the integral problems. Uh, let's say the speaker is elongated in the shape of a rod. 
right? Semicircle, rod. How do I calculate the intensity? Let's say you have the speaker here, elongated speaker, and uh, negative three zero, three zero meters. And I want to calculate the intensity at any random location. Let's say I put my x, y axis like this, right? So then let's say this location is five, four. Somebody staying standing there, right? And I want to know what's going to be the decibel loudness of that. So uh, let's assume this is a 60 watt speaker. So then I'm going to take a piece of the speaker that acts as a point, ch not charge, but point speaker, right? So it's going to be similar to what we do in physics three for rods, and we find the voltage of the rod, right? So the good thing is we don't have to worry about direction again, right? We can say this one creates an intensity over there, right? Di is going to be what? Is going to be the power of that, dp, over 4 pi r squared, where r is this distance. Right? But this portion of the speaker is far, much farther away, you see. So uh, then I have to come up with a general equation for this distance r. Right? It's going to be this thing squared plus this thing squared, right? Square rooted. Right? So what is this distance? Well, if the point is 5, 4, this is 4, what's this distance here? Well, it depends on where I put my coordinate axis, right? If I put my coordinates in the middle, and the rod is going from minus 3 to 3, that means the distance from here to here is x. The thickness of this is dx, right? So if the distance from here to here is x, this distance would be what? Well, 5 represents the distance of this point from the origin, you see? So the distance from here to here is 5. All right, so then that would be pi minus x would be this guy. All right, so depending on where my element is, right, if x is 0, then the distance would be 5. If x is 3, the distance would be 2. This is sh shorter. So then the general equation is that this is dp over 4 pi, and then r squared is going to be what? 5 minus x squared plus 16. Then I'm going to integrate that over the full length of the speaker. Okay? But I need also something that connects the dp to the dx, right? So there comes the linear mass density. In physics 1, we call it linear mass density. In physics 3, we call it linear charge density. Right? And then in physics 2, we can call it linear power density. Right? Lambda, linear power density. And that one will be a, a tool to tell us how the power of the speaker is divided over its length. Is it uniform or is it non-uniform? So if it's 100 watt speaker or 60 watt speaker, are all elements of that speaker just as now? Right? Or it could be a concert hall. Maybe you're a big concert hall. And this could be the stage where you have singers singing. It could be uh, orchestra people playing. If a uniform orchestra would be all the sides of it are just as loud, right? But non-uniform would be, oh, OK, maybe the brass section is louder and the string section is not, not as loud, right? So uh, then linear power density would be dp over dx. It's how the power is distributed over the length of the rod, right? So then if it's uniform, right? So then we're going to say 
if uniform, uh, we're going to have dp is equal to lambda dx. And then if uniform, we can change this to lambda dx, right? And if uniform lambda can come out of the integral, that means lambda is not dependent on the position of the x. Right? So then we have the total intensity, lambda dx over 4 pi can come out. Okay, now what are the limits of my x? Now I have the integral just in terms of x, right? So then what's the limits of the x? Then we're just gonna say um, negative three to three, right? And then this one integral, you have to do it on the calculator. Integral. So learn how to do these integrals using function integral on your calculator. One divided by, then you're gonna put this uh, parentheses, five minus x do an integral. squared plus 16. Yeah, so I already have it there, but I don't, I don't know how to put the limits is the thing. Okay. So you put the function in first and then the limits. For uh, TI-89, uh -huh. you do like this. Well, they're all about comma. the same, but the syntax limit, works comma. something Second like this. Limit, uh, oh, okay, you're gonna put it. parentheses, parentheses, <coughs> five minus x to the second power plus 16. Then you're gonna close it. You see, this parentheses closes this guy. Then you got this parentheses closes this one. Then you're gonna do it to the power negative one. Or you could just do one divided by this thing. To the power negative one because it's on the bottom, right? Uh, then you're gonna do x, negative three, three. The comma, x means integrated in terms of x, and then integrated from minus three to three. And then it's gonna give you 0 0.16, point one, Six zero eight seven five. Right. Then what? Um, that one is just the integral, right? How about lambda now? What is lambda equal to? Well, if it's uniform, what's going to happen? <coughs> uh, dp is equal to lambda dx. This is true whether it's uniform or not, right? But if it's uniform and I integrate this, right? Then you get p is equal to what? If lambda is uniform, it comes out, and then you have integral dx, which is the length of the, uh, the rod, right? So lambda becomes p over l. So the linear mass density or linear power density just becomes the power of the speaker divided by the length of the speaker. So 100, or in this case it was 60, right? 60 divided by the L, which would be uh, six, right? Yeah. yeah, because it's over the total length of the speaker. So that would be 10, and the units of it would be watts per meter, right? 10 watts per meter. Which makes sense because if you have a linear, if you have a power, total power 60, and over distributed over six meters, that means each meter of it, each meter of it, right, has 10 watts. That's what that means. It's uniformly distributed 10 watts per meter. Then you put the 10 over here, and there you have it. You divide 10 by 4 pi, then you multiply it by whatever we got for the integral. Okay? Now I'm getting, when I multiply this by 10 over 4 pi, I'm getting 0 0.12802, right? Then you, I change that to decibel scale. I'm done with the integration, I'm done with my answer. That's the total intensity that someone there would hear, right? So then I multiply this by 10 to the 12 and change it to decibel, multiply by 10 to the 12, 
take the log of that. So 10 log of That's decimals. Okay. Well, what if there was absorption? How would we include that? Right? Would there be more absorption for the piece of the speaker that's here? Would there be less distance? But the piece of the speaker that's here, there's more absorption, right? So it's almost like we have to add another factor here either the minus alpha R, right? So we would have here I. This part would still be true lambda dx, so that one can come out, right? And then we would have either the minus alpha R dx over what? Uh, five minus x squared plus 16. Okay, now what's r? r would be this distance, which would be square root of four plus five minus x squared, right? So let's say the alpha was the same that we had earlier, 1.6. You know what, I think 1.2 was better. 1.6 was too much, I think. So 1.2, then what would be the r? Square root of of uh, 5 minus x squared plus 16. Right? E to the minus 1.2 square root of 5. Whereas this one is square of that. Wait, hold on. Am I doing it right? R squared. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So this is just square root of this. And then we have dx. Negative 3 to 3. So we're really using up the batteries of our calculator now. Right. And then the next we're going to do non-uniform speaker. <laughs> Crazy. Okay, so now I'll go back to the integral. The good thing with the 89 is you can go back and put it into the integral again without having to retype the whole integral. And then you can just uh, change it up a bit. So instead of saying 1 divided by this, I'm going to put the exponential, the exponent e to the power negative 1.2 times, and then this whole thing square root of, so you gotta make sure you put all the parentheses right, right? Uh, e to the minus 1.2 times uh, five minus x squared plus 16 to the power 0.5 uh, minus x squared plus 16 to the 0.5. This one closes this, this one closes that, then I need another one to close that. So you almost have to have one parenthesis here, and then one here, and another one here, and then this is 0.5, then close the whole thing with the parentheses. Alright? So 1.2. 